I think that today a very interesting test is waiting for you, because we have collected, probably, the most popular sedan cars in Ukraine and we will compare them. And rightly so. One of them is liftback. So, the updated Toyota Camry, Mazda 6 Turbo and Peugeot 508, an innovative and very interesting liftback. You're watching the two horsepower program and we're starting our review. Moose obstacle test I start with Toyota. Typically, Toyota finishes a simple job before anyone else. I prefer to do my first test drive at 55 km per hour. At this speed, Toyota performs exemplary, no comment. At 60 km an hour, the story is the same, everything is reliable and predictable. At 70 km an hour, the car shifts the cone, the Camry shifts it to the side, you have to do everything more carefully, and it brings results. На скорости в 70 км я сдвигаю фишку, а нашу Кемри волочит в сторону условного противника. Приходится все делать аккуратнее и тоньше. Это приносит свои плоды. By the way, at a speed of 75 km per hour it is somehow easier to overcome, but this is already the maximum value. Next we need a wider track and permission to scratch the car. Mazda runs at 55 km per hour as usual. It is generally thought that it handles better than Toyota. In general, it is generally accepted that everything is managed better than Toyota. At 60 km per hour, the Mazda also stable, according to the usual mode. At a speed of 65 km per hour, the stability control system starts to turn on gently, but it does not interfere, but really tries to help. The same thing happens at a speed of 70 km. Traction really helps and breaks the car in the right places and at the right time. The main difficulties began at a speed of 75 km per hour. At first, I tried to drive into a very narrow passage, in the end I knocked down a traffic cone at the entrance, and twice. At a speed of 75 km per hour, the car really turns into a hard Mustang, and it is not easy to cope with driving a car, but it is still possible. A detour at a speed of 75 km per hour Mazda 6 is able to overcome, but it does it on the third attempt. I have high hopes for the Peugeot 508, because this is a European car from a famous family that understands the construction of cars for both rally, circuit races. At a speed of 55 km per hour, Peugeot passes without even releasing the accelerator pedal, with cruise control on. At 60 km per hour, a small steering wheel starts to annoy me and I want a shorter rail, or a bigger steering wheel. At 65 km per hour, the stability control system is included in the work and is an effective assistant. The 70 km per hour mark is very interesting, because Peugeot cannot overcome it, or rather not the car itself, but the tires. I'm 90% sure of that. The tires simply do not hold the car, even the stability control system does not save, and this despite the fact that the car will have tires from Michelin, simply not a suitable tire model. The Peugeot is equipped with Michelin Primacy 4, however, it is much better combined with Michelin Pilot Sport 4 tires. In general, with great difficulty and on the third attempt I managed to pass the test at a speed of 70 km per hour, there was no point Peugeot. What was installed on competitors, Toyota and Mazda in Bridgestone Taranza T005A. Toyota had 18th rims, Mazda 19th, and Peugeot had 18th. Who won this exercise? I believe Toyota. The car reached its limit and mine in fewer attempts. This is certainly quite a sensational result because my expectations OT Toyota were lowered. Roof racks in our cars are, of course, a separate topic. Let's see how they open. For example, in a Toyota Camry, we press a button, we have a remote control, and look, the trunk is fully opened. There is no electric drive here, it is simply the result of the work of a steel cable and a spring. I think this is very good. We also have a full spare wheel under the floor and you have to remember that the rear seat does not fold down here and they do not add up because Toyota engineers decided so. Let's take a look at how the trunk opens on a Mazda. We press a button on the remote control of the car. Yes, 
Nothing is configured here, no steel cables, no springs, but you need to go and open the trunk. The bonus is that you have the rear seat backs folded down, but you have no reserve wheels or spare wheels, only a wheel repair kit. And finally, the Peugeot trunk opens with the help of an electric drive and thanks to the fact that this is our lift back, we have grandiose access to this very trunk. Among other things, you get an emergency wheel here. You also have the rear seats fold out. When it comes to the quality of the trunk materials, and our premium viewers often ask this question, the best materials are used in the Peugeot 508. Because here is such a very high quality pile fabric, and you know, I'm very sorry. Because I would like to see the same insert made of plastic or rubber, which is in the Toyota Camry, because the pile can get dirty very quickly, and it will be very sad. We start to break at a speed of 60 km per hour. Each car has three attempts. The best Toyota braking is 10 meters 76 centimeters. The worst result is 11 meters 44 centimeters. The average for the three stages is 11 meters 4 centimeters. The best Mazda result is 11 meters 66 centimeters. The worst result is 12 meters 67 centimeters. The average for the three stages is 12 meters 20 centimeters. To my surprise, the best braking of Peugeot is quite competitive 10 meters 73 centimeters. The worst braking result is 12 meters 49 centimeters. The average indicator over the results of three stages is 11 meters 71 centimeters. Thus, Toyota, in first place, Peugeot Mazda. In third place, in our case in last place. Obviously, the Camry is the most spacious car in our test. There is a lot of space in the Toyota Camry. My knees don't reach the backs of the seat, even though the driver's seat is adjusted to my height. Here we have a great armrest, and here we have a great place for cup holders. We have two air ducts, at the bottom we have two connectors, I'm not too lazy to look. Yes, these are two USB, NE Type-C. Among other things, the rear seats of the Toyota Camry remind me, of course, of the business class, because here we have a chic armrest, next to it is the control of all systems for the second row. What kind of systems? First, we have a curtain. Now it has been activated. Secondly, we have a second curtain, but the truth is, you can't control it in any way. Then we have the heated second row seats. Next, you can control the radio. Among other things, you can also adjust the position of the backrests in the car. Now I will demonstrate to you. Here you are, look. This passenger seat back has extended, and in the same way it has retracted. I can do the same with my half of the second row. Here you are, look. And this, of course, is a powerful competitive advantage. It is clear that it is like a business class, like a car for work, like a car for a person who bought a Toyota for himself so that he could have a driver. The owner needs to be constantly brought, that is, he is only interested in the second row of seats. But here the Toyota Camry simply beyond competition. There is a lot of space, you have an adjustable backrest, and you have a control unit for almost all the functionality of the car. Now let's take a look at the Mazda 6 car. The appearance of the second row in the Mazda 6 is much more modest than that of the Toyota Camry, because there is clearly less room here than in the interior of a Toyota car. Secondly, here we do not have any electric drives to the seat backs. And the seat backs are not adjustable here. Thirdly, from the second row, we cannot control either the curtains or the radio tape recorder. Our only entertainment is the inclusion of heated seats and two cup holders. And by the way, here I have not yet found USB connectors, but only because I did not see them right away. It's in the armrest right here.
What else can you tell us good about this salon? There is a good diode illumination in the car interior. And I practically do not rest my head on the ceiling. That's good. I thought there would be much less space here. And in the nomination the closest salon among the three contenders, of course, the Peugeot 508 wins. I rest my knees against the back of the front seat, they are soft, but nevertheless it is a fact. I also rest my head against the ceiling, and it is obvious that there is relatively little space here. Any good news for second row passengers? Well, you still have very cool padded designer seats, you have two USB, have two armrests. And look, these are frameless doors. They are frameless not only for the front passengers, but also for the passengers in the rear seats. I couldn't find the seat heater switch quickly and it also took a while. Now let's look at the results and finally figure out where the tires are to blame, and where the suspension settings are. So, Toyota goes through this exercise in 11 minutes 68 seconds, drives traditionally, wobbly and rather carelessly, but understandably and without surprises. Mazda maintains a smaller roll angle, from this and the trajectory of the path is better, and the time is minus 11 minutes 20 seconds. Here Mazda outperforms Toyota, but we also have Peugeot, which has not yet passed this stage. And Peugeot suddenly wins this stage with a best time of 11 minutes 8 seconds. It is clear that all three participants finished with a small time difference. But even half a second is already a significant advantage. And here the question arises. What happened at the first stage with Peugeot? Was the loss of efficiency due to the wrong tires, or was there some other factor causing it? We checked, of course. Are cars capable of responding to a potentially hazardous situation? For example, self-brake in front of a sudden obstacle. Each of the competitors received one attempt. The first was carried out up to a speed of 30 km per hour, without activating active cruise control. And the second one is just over 30 km per hour and with active cruise control already on. We start with the Mazda 6. The vehicle detects threats in a timely manner, beeps inside the vehicle and displays graphic symbols on the dashboard. The system, having determined that the driver did not intend to react to the threat, immediately performed emergency braking, and the car avoided a collision. Will Mazda benefit from active cruise control, which is essentially a primitive version of autopilot? Yes it will help. At the same time, it seems to me that he will assess the situation on the road earlier and better. Peugeot 508 and the Peugeot brand in general have never failed in such tests, everything happened clearly and predictably. This time, the first attempt confirms my confidence, a sharp braking and a complete stop in front of an obstacle. With active cruise control on, everything happens no less clearly and clearly. Horn, graphic warning on the dashboard, it looks like Peugeot you can completely trust. But remember that all the electronic systems of the car are called assistants, and the driver is still solely responsible for driving the car. Now we are going to test the Toyota, which is famous for its failures. Toyota models with enviable consistency do not react to obstacles and knock them down. The updated Camry, despite all the manufacturer's assurances, gets into a traffic accident on the first try. But we're not moving on to the second exercise with cruise control on. Instead, we are starting to fine-tune the sensors and radars to increase their sensitivity to some extent. Unlike previous models, this works with sedan and Toyota, which sensationally and voluntarily brakes in front of an obstacle. When active cruise control is on, it is done with a large margin and very carefully.
Finally, thank you Toyota for the work done on the bugs. You've probably already seen single reviews of these cars. And who has not seen, then right now you will see links to them, go and get more detailed information on each of the models. We continue to compare cars. And we continue our story with information about motors, gearboxes, power, dynamics and fuel consumption. And so, the Mazda 6 in our review is equipped with a gasoline turbo engine with a volume of 2 and 5 tenths of a liter and an automatic 6-speed gearbox. Power 231 horsepower, torque 420 newtons, the promised acceleration 7 seconds, the promised consumption 10 and 7 tenths of liters in the city and 5 and 9 tenths of liters, on the highway. Toyota Camry, equipped with a petrol turbo engine of 2 and 5 tenths of a liter, 8-speed automatic transmission, no CVT, 207 horsepower. The torque is 243 newtons, the promised acceleration is 8 and 7 tenths of a second, the consumption in the city is 9 and 3 tenths of a liter, on the highway is 5 and 4 tenths of a liter. Peugeot 508 a 2-liter turbo diesel and an 8-speed automatic transmission, power 180 horsepower, torque 402 newtons, acceleration of 8 and 7 tenths of a second, consumption in the city 7 and 1 tenths of a liter, on the highway 4 and 6 tenths of a liter. What's in reality? Let's start with fuel consumption. We check this only on the track with the cruise control on, in order to avoid the human factor during the tests as much as possible. At a speed of 90 km per hour, Toyota's consumption is 4 and 6 tenths 4 and 7 tenths of liters of gasoline. With an increase in speed to 130 km per hour, the consumption increases 6 and 6 tenths 6 and 7 tenths of liters, in dynamics 9 and 8 tenths of a second, and this is worse for a second than the declared result. What are the indicators of the diesel Peugeot? At a speed of 90 km per hour, this is fuel consumption from 4 to 4 and 2 tenths of a liter of diesel fuel, and at a speed of 135 km per hour, from 5 and 8 tenths to 5 and 9 tenths of a liter, the best acceleration result is 9 and 2 tenths of a second. Mazda 6 is the most powerful in our test and, in theory, should consume more and accelerate faster. Although the cases are different. So, the result of the Mazda 7 and 2 tenths of a liter at a speed of 100 km per hour. This is practically the declared 7 seconds, in terms of consumption at a speed of 90 km per hour 6 and 50 liters, and at a speed of 130 km per hour 8 and 5 tenths of a liter. We will summarize. The most economical was the diesel Peugeot. Toyota, is very close to it in terms of parameters, at least if we are talking about fuel consumption on the highway. Mazda is not the most economical, but the fastest. And Toyota loses to everyone in acceleration. And now is the time to race 402 meters, without the participation of Mazda, which, for obvious reasons, is faster than its competitors. So, the first race, by a small margin, wins the Toyota Camry, which is slowest until the first 100 kilometers, but faster after that. In the second stage, something goes wrong, and Peugeot came to the finish line first with a significant advantage. The third attempt is to judge our competitors. And here again Toyota wins, with difficulty, but it wins. What else have I not told? I have not told about the car trunk. Here we focus on information from the manufacturer. Mazda, car trunk, depending on the presence or absence of a subwoofer, ranges from 429 to 470 liters. For Toyota this figure is 469 to 493 liters. And for Peugeot everything is 487 liters. And now a little about salons and multimedia, I have already said that Interface Toyota reminds me of Kleichko, somewhat confusing speech, the meaning is clear, but the sentences are somehow illogical. In addition, the resolution of the monitor and the quality of the camera's picture, alas, leave much to be desired, while Toyota practically unbeatable in terms of size, noise isolation and suspension comfort. Mazda probably has the most laconic, most elegant interior. She has excellent media control with a pointing device, a good camera and a good multimedia monitor. In terms of suspension it is similar to Toyota. In terms of noise insulation it is close to Toyota, or in the interior Mazda looks smaller and cramped.
Peugeot 508 undoubtedly has the most beautiful interior design and the richest car interior materials. Multimedia, the instrument panel display is much better than the Japanese. It is essentially a flying saucer, and Mazda and Toyota are reliable bombers from the Second World War. At the same time, the Peugeot suspension is stiffer than that of its competitors. The salon is noticeably narrower than Toyota, and sound insulation is slightly worse. I don't know about you, but I still haven't decided which one I would choose among these three cars. I really like the Peugeot interior, I like these innovative details. I love the way the Mazda 6 Turbo. And I am delighted with the comfort and size of the Toyota Camry. What should you choose? What will I personally choose? What will you choose? I recommend that you share in the comments below the video. I think we did our best for this.